Hello, this is Some Other Bob on Flickr, and in this video I intend to show the use of some Photoshop techniques to do color enhancement and some sharpening uh, using uh, masking and layering and duplicating some layers so that you have some very fine control uh, over the color enhancement and sharpening to different regions. This uh, set of uh, techniques are, are some that I picked up from the Flickr group, uh, Photoshop support group, and in particular from some posts by uh, Tennessee Gator. And uh, so I've taken uh, a lot of learnings from that uh, group and, and Tennessee Gator. And uh, I'm going to also add in some of my own uh, use of uh, layering and masking to help um, provide a, a really good control over what's going on within your photo. So in this photo uh, I have opened up. Uh, this is the photo just as it comes out of the camera. And uh, one of the things I always like to do at the beginning is take a look at levels. And uh, we're going to take a look at the histogram on this, and it's not uh, too bad. We see that uh, we've got a lot of data that is spread over um, the, the picture. And we uh, haven't hit the, the peak here, so we haven't clipped at the top. Uh, we have clipped at the bottom, but you can see there's a pretty sharp drop-off uh, down at the bottom end here. So there's not a lot of data that uh, probably got clipped off on the original uh, picture. Uh, but one of the things that uh, is pointed out in uh, Tennessee Gator's uh, color enhancement is uh, a mode that you probably haven't played with too much. This uh, picture, uh, since it is a JPEG, um, it is in an RGB color space, and so we have channels that show red, green, and blue. So if I come over to my Layers palette, and if I click on the Channels tab here, you will see that I've got a combined RGB layer. I also have red content, the green content, and the blue content. And uh, we can look at these one at a time. And the content of each of these channels is shown in uh, black and white. Uh, and if you click on this, you see them all. Uh, but what we're going to do is instead of enhancing the red, green, and blue individually, we're going to change our image mode to lab color mode. Now this is not lab in the sense of we're taking it into a darkroom lab or doing anything like that. If we come back here and take a look at the channels, we have a lightness channel, we have A, and we have B channels. And uh, so we're going to take a, a look here at our uh, background layer, go back to that. And what we're going to do is first start and work on some uh, color enhancement. So we're going to overlay a new adjustment layer using curves. So we'll just click on the defaults. Now you'll notice in the curves dialog, we have the same channels, lightness A and B. If we were still in RGB mode, you would see RGB channels. Now we're going to take channel A and channel B one at a time, and we are going to change how uh, the colors are mapped. And so uh, along the bottom here we have input colors, and up here we have output colors in the color space of A. Now Tennessee Gator recommends just dragging these two in and we'll turn on and off preview and you can see that we have highlighted kind of a magenta ranges of color. And um, one other thing that you might notice here is I've got a fine grid. Um, if, or if we alt click you get a change in the grid pattern. And he has uh, highlighted that he prefers to come in on the color space by two. And you'll see that the colors are getting a little garish there, but that's uh, to be expected because we've only played with A. And we've pulled it in pretty, pretty hard on, on the steepness here. So we're going to go to B, and we'll pull it in as well. 
and we're going to leave the lightness channel the same because we don't want to do, deal with any contrast or brightness here. We're just dealing with color enhancement at this step. So we're going to click OK. Now, to my eye, that looks a bit garish. And uh, you can treat the entire photograph by just dragging the opacity up and down. And you can pick a certain spot here, and then you can turn it on and off, and you can see whether you like that effect. And uh, so you can be done at, at this point as far as color enhancement if, if you wish. Um, one of the other uh, things that you can do, and uh, this is something that uh, I would like to do on this photograph, is I'm going to make sure that I have my mask selected on my curves layer. If you take a look at this region, in particular these uh, stalks uh, in, in the background, I think they've gotten a bit too much of a reddish cast. And uh, so I am going to do something to, about that by playing with the mask. Now if you recall, if I double click here, you're going to get another look at our A and B curves. Okay. And so now we're going to take this mask area and we are going to hide those A and B curve adjustments from these regions. And to do that, you can see that my mask is white. So all of the curves are applied across all the picture. So if I come over here and I switch my foreground color to black, and then I make sure I have my paintbrush tool selected and I'm going to go with a large brush and you can see I've got a fuzzy brush. I can go hard edged if, if I wish. For this I think I'll do a hard edge and I am going to paint black on the mask. Now remember I'm not painting on the color I'm painting on the mask. I'm going to shrink my brush a bit here and I'm going to hit these areas that are close to the flower with my hard edged brush and you'll see that I have now masked off the color curves adjustment from affecting the background picture. So we're going to turn the mask on and off and you or the uh, layer on and off and you can now see that the region of the branches are not changing, just the flower. And I could go down here and do the same treatment over here, but the reddish tint that comes in there is not as objectionable. So now we've got a, a color that we seem, you know, looks, looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is do some sharpening.